Well, guys, as you can see, the first thing we did was excavate the foundation. And in this case, we framed it. This is a section of wall that uh, was uh, coming down on its own because of the people that came in before us uh, maybe a few years back. Uh, they put up this wall, but this wall wasn't done uh, right, even though it was probably done by a company. But as you can see, it's got no reinforcement in the center. It's got no reinforcement in the inside the cells. Uh, so that's not going to be a sturdy enough wall if you build it that way, even though you got mortar and the blocks. You know, roots could push it over and or make it lean uh the proper way of doing it is uh, putting rebar every so often at least at every four feet on center and then grout solid all those cells that have uh rebar so we excavated further we went 16 inches down and then we poured a little stem wall to catch our height on, on our grade uh, and then we set the first row uh, today we're ready to start picking up on the wall. It's got a rebar at every four feet on center, and then this column. Uh, and we're gonna try to match the wall on the other side. We went and got some new block, although it's not the same. We couldn't find that uh, one they used over there, so we're gonna be using this one. It matches pretty close. <coughs> So we'll continue in a sec. Okay, everybody. So the first thing you got to learn is uh, how to spread your mud. What you do is you uh, go into the mud, you shake it a couple of times, and then the mud sticks to your trowel. Right? So once it sticks, then uh, you could slide it at an angle on your block. So you do the same all the way around. And then place where you can't slide it, you just throw a little bit of butt more like that. Next thing you do is you gotta learn how to handle your block. You gotta grab it in a way that uh, you're able to balance it. four directions next then you gotta be able to set it down in a way that it goes down not to one side or the other but straight down after that you clean all, all your edges and what you're looking for is that it's a uh, straight with the bottom one on, on at least two sides. Or this column block. After that, you grab your level. You look at the bubble, make sure that uh, the, bu the bubble is centered in both directions. It's got to be right in the middle of those two little lines. To both sides. When you got that, you set your plumb. Then you look at this part on top. Make sure that the bubble's right on it. You're looking for two sides to be plumb. Okay, you do the same in the back one. And that's it. For this part, you just stack it all the way up to full height. Okay guys, so next thing we're gonna do after we have our column up, we're gonna set a plumb line On the wall so that it's easier for you guys to follow as you set your first block make 
just get that drawn on your line or if you have a wall that you're going up against or whatever you just make sure that your bubble is right in the center after that is up you're ready to go and then you count how many blocks you're going to go up in this case is seven more blocks so we we're going to build a lead right here on this side you need to count your cells too and make sure you go the same amount of cells this way that you have a uh, height wise so you spread your mud all the way until you reach your seventh uh, cell spread it on both sides And the way these blocks are set up, they have a tongue and groove. There are some that don't have it. You need to put a, what they call a head joint. So you need to put your joint on your block and then uh, your bed joint, like we did here. In this case, just because uh, this column is gonna get wrapped with some stone, we're just gonna put it on the first one so that it so that it bonds better to your to your column. So you spread your mud on your block. Wrong side. Okay, like you can see right here, first mis mistake, we're trying to follow the same uh, bed joints. So once you uh, set your first block, you gotta make sure that it's uh, cross level. And then you wanna make sure that it's level across coming the other way. clean off the, the mud on your straight side and you make sure that you're following your plumb line after that you put the level on, on top and this is following our straight level this is our what gives us our line coming this way so as you see, when I set this first block, I came down a little lower. So just make sure that on the next one, you pick up with a thicker joint. On this one, on this uh, one I'm just gonna leave it like that. But that's one of the things that you gotta be looking at as you uh, go up. On this one, you just slide your block. Clean off your mud. Tap it down to where the other one is. Set your cross level. And then catch your, your level going across the other way. Here that's done. Go back to your first first block on the corner and then down to the other side to make sure you you have your, your both your blocks straight to the other one. Okay. 
then you go on to your next one. So on and so forth, do the same thing all the way going up until you catch your final one. After this is set, then you're going to be able to hang a line on this block, on every block, and you don't have to uh, make a spot anymore. So we'll show you that in a little bit. Okay guys, so after you, you're done setting your, your row, make sure you run your joiner. To finish off your bed joint, you do that uh, right after you finish setting your block, and uh, then you continue on to the next row, and then the next row after that. Okay, guys, this is called a grout stop. What it is is uh, when you're not filling every cell solid on your block walls which isn't necessary, you know, unless you want to do a, a sound wall or something like that to keep the noise out. Uh, what you do is you use this thing right here. It's called a grout stop. It's uh, just a little mesh to keep the, the grout from going into the cells where we don't need it. So you put it in between your, your uh, cells that have rebar. and you keep on building up. When you grout this, the wall, it's just gonna grout the, the next row gets a rebar all the way across, but it'll only grout that, that block with the rebar in it. Okay guys, girls, whoever's watching, the way I look at it is if one person watches this video and learns something from it, that's good enough for me, so. Anyhow, uh, as you can see, this kind of block with the sash is called a bonding block. And what it is, is uh, used for running a piece of rebar horizontally. So this is what I was talking about. All these blocks that have the rebar in it need to be grouted solid with uh, concrete. Otherwise, they're, you know, you might as well not put any concrete in them. Uh, rebar and concrete are meant to to uh, be put together there they complement each other the rebar without any concrete doesn't do any good and the concrete without any rebar you know it's the same thing the other way around so make sure that every cell that gets uh, rebar gets uh, grouted with concrete uh, so this will be ready and uh, once you grout it with concrete the concrete won't go into your bottom cells only where the rebar is because you're not going to put any mesh in that cell going down so okay guys so now we got all our lead up it's uh as you can see half uh waist on each block all the way up to the uh, eighth uh, row that we're going to be doing on this particular wall what you do next is uh you go off to the opposite side about 40 feet away in this case we're going to do a run just basically to the end of this wall and we're going to set what they call a spot so a spot block is going to hold up it's 
gonna hold up your your line on this end, and then you're gonna hang it on that other end. Okay. So you gotta make sure that your your mud is spread evenly, so that your block doesn't sag to one side or the other. And then you uh, go halfway on your block. You set it down slowly. Put your cross level first. And then your level. This is gonna be where your string needs to be. Every block measures seven and five eighths from uh, bottom to top. And what that does is uh, you gotta set your block at eight inch increments. So it allows for three eighths of a bed joint. So that's where you're looking to get every time you set your block. After you set it, set it down, you put your, your plumb first, making sure that your bubble is in the center. You put it in the back of the block and then you go cross level from the top of your block to your block in front and make sure that the block is even with your with your level after that is done you check your your cross level again and your level make sure that your block didn't move and that's ready for you to hang your string we'll see how to do that in a second okay guys so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, hang our string what you want to do is if you have this set up you want to put it on one of the rebars that you have uh, further back and that will allow you for some you just all you do is you just go once around the rebar you slide it down and then when it's far far down enough you pull your string up on top of that one that you were sliding down then you pull your rebar I mean your string all the way to the other end and then find one of these this is called the line stretcher it's got for a six inch and an eight inch on the other side what you want to do is you pull on your string and then you uh, you hook it onto that end. You know, you can run around a couple of times and then you go under the six inch side. And this won't fit because of the split face. So then you got the option of doing it on the eight inch side. Do the same thing. You hook it onto the eight inch side and then pull it hard. And then the uh, pull on this string is gonna allow for this uh, line stretcher to stay in place. So after you've done that, you go to the other side. You find one of these, this is called a twig. What it does, it's also called a line holder. You know, just a little twig. They, put in place and your blocks ready set to where it needs to be you just add some weight to it something that'll hold the string to be a piece of block or whatever and that way your your line is already set to to where you're going to be able to set all your blocks to you see it's got a little gap on every block that you set you want to make sure that it's not crowding the line. Make sure that you have that little uh, sixteenth of, of an inch gap, no more than that. Otherwise, it means that you're leaning up against your line. And by the time you build up, you're going to be leaning up out an inch or so. So it could happen. I've seen it happen. So, hey guys, as you can see, what follows next is you spread all your bed joint. And like we said, these blocks are tongue and groove. You got a tongue and then a, a groove on the other side. So all you need to do is just slide it down and uh, pretty easy, easy process. Just look behind your...
behind your wall, make sure that it's on top of the other one. And, uh, so just block by block. Like I said, make sure you leave a little gap in between your your block and your line. So you go. Another thing that's very important is as you're building up, don't use the ones that have a, a tongue, what we call a bombing block. Don't use them on the rebar cells. Just use a solid or a, a box card block. That's what they're called or regular block. That's all there is to it. So, okay guys, so at this point we've reached uh, about mid height on this uh, short wall. And uh, we reached the bomb bombing course. As you see, we ran the rebar all the way through. What we do next is in between the rebar cells, we're gonna grout our wall with a concrete mix. So just uh, fill all the cells in between. You could, uh, on a big project, you could ask for a really uh, soft slurry, slurry uh, mix and uh, the rebar, will, I mean the concrete will run down the rebar cells and it'll catch this one almost halfway. You know, which is just which is plenty uh, for reinforcement purposes. But in this case, I like I personally like to do it. You know, when we reach uh, mid height, grout in between my my uh, rebar cells. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, something uh, kind of important if you want to have a cleaner look to your walls is uh, after you allow for the joints to dry up for a little bit, uh, you hit it with a soft brush. You know, just going across your joints like that, trying to take all the uh, excess mud that got pushed out. through on your wall until you uh, knock down all the joints if you got if you caught it too fresh still and you knocked off all the excess just hit it with your joiner one more time uh, and that'll clean it up so that was basically it that's all there is to it so any questions you guys have feel free to tap on that subscribe button and uh, 
and go ahead and uh, ask me I'll try to uh, get back to you as soon as possible and uh, we'll continue on loading videos of different projects that we do and the different ways of doing it we do pavers we do stonework we do block work we do out we do outdoor kitchens we do just a number of things that's got to do with masonry on the masonry side and then we also do stamp concrete we also do uh, just regular concrete foundation work you know you name it on the concrete side of things so uh, over the years we learned how to do landscaping awnings gazebos and stuff like that uh, uh, swimming pool decks so we do a lot of things and uh, if you have something uh, that you want to do yourself or you want to try doing yourself uh, please uh, uh, go ahead and ask me and I'll do my best to load something uh, that will help you out. Thanks. My name is Juan Carlos. Thanks for all the uh, support and uh, keep in touch.